Okay, so this is then the enzymes required practical. Okay, and the whole point in this is to investigate the effect of pH, right, on amylase, which is an enzyme, and looking at the rate of the reaction when we're talking about this. Now, firstly, to go through equipment, there's quite a lot of equipment involved in this. Firstly, we've got test tubes. We've got a test tube rack, which we're then going to put the actual test tubes in. We've got a water bath, which is the beaker here, right, which we keep at 35 degrees C. A thermometer to make sure it stays at 35 degrees C. This is then a spotting tile, and it's basically a white plastic tray with 12 sort of dimples in it. A five centimeter cube measuring cylinder. <clears throat> a pasta pipette, which is one of these little kind of cheap squeaky pipette things. A glass rod, a stop clock, okay, I'll draw a stop clock, a perfect stop clock. Starch solution, there's it, a starch solution. Amylase solution, right, iodine, which is usually in a little bottle, and labelled buffered solutions at a range of pH values. Right, so what I might have one is, I might have one at pH 4. Right, and the idea of a buffered solution is the fact that it stays at that pH. Now, the method. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run through the method and I'm going to kind of break it up into two parts. Firstly, heat your water bath to 35 degrees C. Okay, so what you've got is you've got a beaker of water, heat it up, just put some red in it because that's obviously fire, right, and you're going to have it at 35 degrees C. Put two centimeter cubed of buffered solution into a test tube. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a test tube, and in there, I'm then going to put two centimeter cubed of the buffered solution. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two centimeter cubed of starch solution into the same one. So it's there. So I've got four centimeter cubed in there. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have another test tube. And in that other test tube, there is one centimeter cubed of amylase solution. Then you put both test tubes in there. Okay, so both test tubes go in there, right? And what happens is they then stay or they then get to 35 degrees C, right? So no experiments happened, you're literally just getting it to the correct temperature. Then <clears throat> you get your spotting tile which looks a bit like that, right? and you put a drop of iodine into each one of the little dimples. Right? So what you can do is you can see on here, right, if I kind of do like a ready colour, iodine, 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 iodine. Now obviously that's got a bit of colour to it, right? but when you actually do this, you've got little drops of iodine in each one of the little dimples. Then you've got your test tube that's got your starch, Right, and it has got your um, um, buffer solution in it. Right, so you've got four centimeter cubes. You then need to get the amylase solution, and you need to pour it in. Give it a shake, right? And as soon as you pour it in, you start the stop clock. Then every 20 seconds. What you do is you get a little bit of a dropping pipette, all right, and remove a little tiny bit of that mixture. I'll do this in blue. Take a little bit of that mixture and you put it into one of those little spotting tiles there, one of the little dimples. And you keep doing that until it doesn't go black, right? Because initially what it should do, it should go black, which shows starch is present. Then, over time, what's happening is the amylase is reacting with, breaking down the starch, right? And eventually what will happen is the amylase will break down all the starch, and what it will do then, it will then stay the same colour, and the iodine will then not change colour. So as soon as this little dot here doesn't change colour, the reaction's finished. And what you can do then is you can record your time on a table and if you've seen that it's gone black, 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 not black, it's 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120 seconds. Okay, then record it on a table and then plot a graph of your results. Okay, so that's what the method then is. <clears throat>
Right, so this then shows it again. So what you've got is you've got your spotting tile with iodine in each one. This is then your mixture at the top, and it says on here every 30 seconds. I prefer to do it in every 20 seconds, right? Put a little drop in until it stays the colour of the iodine. Right, variables. Don't mess in class, right? So dependent measure is the time, so during the practical, you're measuring the time for the iodine to stop changing color. Don't mess in class, so the independent is what you change between experiments, which is the pH, and the control is temperature, which is at 35, the iodine concentration, the volume of the liquid, you've got two, two, and one, right? They're just examples of some of the things that you can have as a control. Now, uh, there's two graphs. The basic graph that you kind of get from your results shows like this one at the top, where what you've got is you've got time on that axis, right, usually measured in seconds, and you've got the pH going across the bottom. And what you'll find is the shortest time, which is probably around about pH 7, is the one where it's reacted the quickest. So the quicker the reaction the better the conditions are for the amylase. Uh, you can calculate it as a rate with pH across the bottom, and that then is probably where pH 7 would be, right, being the optimum pH for amylase. Right, now that's the enzyme practical, right, and what it is is just really comparing the effect of pH on amylase. And what you'll probably have is you probably have pH buffers of like 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And you've got to do exactly the same experiment in exactly the same conditions for each one of those five pH buffers. Right? And then what you do is, like on the previous side, you'll then get a graph out. Personally, I think the most important thing about this is remembering the method. Okay? And it's all those details like 35 degrees C using a water bath. Right? And then your final sort of summary bit will be the optimum pH for amylase to work.